Hello, this is Captain Poodle speaking. Are you ready to find love? Yes, ahoy, matey. Love. Do, 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 do. Exciting and new. Ooh. Go online. Hmm. They're catfishing you. Shocker. Fiance. Soon you'll be flying to parts unknown. 90 day Beyonce. Marrying someone you only met on your phone. Be they French or Chinese, a brand new K1 visa's the key. Ooh, the key to what, Poodle? To love. <laughs> it's reality, yay. Let's love. I want to get drunk right now. Just want to get drunk. I could fix Just, you a drink. No, I have to oh, drive I, home. You know what? I don't have any alcohol. We have to stop the show. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> That's how we started and we're already stopping the show. I don't, I don't have any alcohol. <laughs> What's wrong with Poodle? Because I had, I, you know what? Since I had I a little bit. I got to turn camera around. What? I'm turning the, the viewfinder. Are we on? Yeah, we're on. We're recording. Uh, I had that much uh, left of a, a vodka in my bottle and I didn't drink on Thanksgiving and I did have like two drinks on Friday and I think that's it. That was it. I'm bored. I am too. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> you know happily ever after <laughs> season seven, episode 14, stand by me, which you never do. <laughs> I'm lobbing you co- jokes and you always, <laughs> instead of me setting you up for something, <laughs> You batter away like a cat. Yes, that's what you do. Yo, happy Thanksgiving if we, you're coming back from it. I oh, hope boy. everyone's uh, recovered from their turkey comas or I had a chicken. I cooked a chicken this year. Buttermilk. I was, I was being dangerous. Buttermilk biscuit. Buttermilk brined chicken. It's delicious. Samin Nostrat's recipe. Did you cook it with the potatoes underneath it? I did not because I have made potatoes in another form. Ah. If, if you're doing your chicken the the right way, it it, it will it won't let out a lot, let of, out juice. lot of juices. Yeah. What did you make? You didn't talk about that on the last you didn't oh, go. Oh, okay. Into I'll the menu. I'll say that and then I'll I'll end all the Thanksgiving talk. Okay. I made a potato casserole which is like uh, sometimes people call it funeral potatoes with the cornflakes on top, and oh, that's true, that is yeah. my very. It's a very family holiday thing. Yeah, that I got to make up that. With. It's very. I good. made some Brussels sprouts with um, uh, some uh, pomegranate seeds and pistachios in the air fryer. Yeah, and a little bit of honey. Do I top. need to get an air fryer? I don't really have a lot of space in my. Kitchen, you don't have enough space. Everybody says to get one. But you don't. I have don't have space. space, so I'm like, eh. I have enough space in my kitchen. I leave it out. I hate pulling it back. And I don't it like out. doing that either. Um, I would say wait till you get a bigger place. Well, I'm not doing that anytime soon. Um, or you can get them. You can get them small, but I don't think y'all can come at him if you can have some small air fryers. Excuse me, I just burped. Um, wow. I won't hear it. You do it all the time. <sighs> So uh, I made that. I made my dressing. Mm-hmm. I made gravy, and I, this is the first year I've ever done this. Um, the I I started you buy chick- chicken wings. Uh, I'm I made gravy the night before a ch- gravy starter or a gravy booster, and I beat the fuck out of chicken wings and cooked them down to where there was a fond and some. Uh, Ina some, does a, a gravy yes. starter, yeah, and uh, the gravy was the best gravy I've ever made in my life. Oh wow! Yeah, my so mom good. fucked it up. <laughs> she did. She didn't get thick enough. She fucked it up. Tasted like flour. Oh, that's the worst. You know, my mom used to be a really, really good cook, but then she, she just hasn't cooked Stopped doing in like it. fifteen, twenty years. So she doesn't know. How Why to doesn't do she it. cook anymore? <sighs> I don't know. I want her to cook, to love herself enough to cook for herself. They she just they just would rather order something. Yeah, but you're not going to get 
the food you get out is over salted, over greasy. Mm -hmm. It's just it's it's too rich. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Don't make your life of that because it's just not good for your health. No, I just try to get my father to. As my and we saw what happened there. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> it's didn't, my fault. Didn't go good. Didn't go good. <laughs> didn't go good. Oh, Darcy and Stacey's going to be out in a month. It will be. Six weeks. Stream Sisters, too. Um, yeah, I once made him turn on Tommy. We mm. better left her last time. Mm. Um, y'all, sorry for our 30 minute Thanksgiving talk, but not sorry because this episode was boring. I apologize. I apologize for nothing. Yes. Um, but my, I once cooked something. My dad said, My aunt, that was okay, but just don't use them fresh herbs. <laughs> <laughs> they got a kick. <laughs> And I went, of but that just tells relative. you his palate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and probably when you're when you're not feeling well, like he was supposedly, um, <laughs> um, you want something that is bland. But no, uh, that was just that was just normal. Him. Yeah, it's just normal. Canned tamales. Oh yeah, Vienna sausages. Like my mom said, oh, I'm gonna make sweet potatoes. She's like, but I like to make them. I just like to cook them a little bit with like a little bit of like a maple glaze or something. I went, well, that sounds good. I said, I don't really like the sweet potatoes with the mushrooms yeah. on it. And I looked and my mom had sweet potatoes from a can. <laughs> and she opened the can of sweet potatoes and put them in a dish, poured some maple syrup on them and heated them up in the microwave. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Because that's what they grew up eating. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine with it's sweet potatoes. It's a different generational thing with food. Yeah. Um, uh, my mother adapted. No, but if she, I if I made homemade sweet potatoes like she'd roasted love in the oven, I remember one time I made broccoli with just onions and lemon, and she went, "This is the best thing up." So my yeah. mom has the palate for it. She just doesn't want to do it. Yeah, that's a her lot boyfriend of doesn't though. Yeah. He won't eat. He he's not a vegetable person. Doesn't like any of that. So he just wants meat and bacon and meat and cheese. Well, good luck with that angioplasty. I mean, he's got heart problems, too. <laughs> so there you go. Take care of yourself. Take care of you yourself. You gotta eat everybody. something green occasionally. You gotta do it occasionally. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Y'all, if you're watching in a mature portrait, you see I put up my Christmas tree. Oh, I, oh, Christmas tree, oh, oh Christmas tree, oh, how beautiful are branches. Thank you, thank you. I don't um, really know that that Carol. I could never remember all the fucking lyrics. To, I always got you know, that it, one. You confused. know why? Because there are different American lyrics. It's a it's a, the the tradition. The original is a German. Uh, o Tannenbaum. No, I know they. It's O Tannenbaum. Troy Zint. But they, when they translate it to English, I don't know why. I remember every other carol I used to sing, but I never could remember <laughs> that. <laughs> I think I remember the <laughs> English <laughs> translation. O Tannenbaum, O Tannenbaum, wie Troy Zint deine. Sorry. We'll finish it. Blätter. There you go. But the English translation is not good. It's clunky. Yeah. Clunky lyrics. Yeah. A lot of those. What? Anyway, I'm happy with my eye. One, one thing um, we were going to talk about on this episode, because we're coming up into the holiday season. We were going to talk mm. about kind of s picks for our, our Christmas tree. If you're watching the intimate portrait... You can see it in the yeah. background. It um, you, this, you want to walk around and do a showcase and I I'll can't, hold the mic? I can't hold the mic. Okay. You can, can just you scream it? at the microphone. <laughs> okay. Just scream what at is? it. Yeah. Okay, I'll go this way. If you're doing the intimate portrait, y'all, you're getting a... Oh, here. You know what? I'm going to go behind the camera. Here. No, I'm going to do it like this. And this I, is it. Ooh. I'm, okay. Christina so. hates... I'm going to zoom in with the camera. Oh! So this could go, go really bad. This is going to go um, really, really so bad. So, you guys, you can see I've... Um, some this is going... Very. Oh, oh, okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. Some of these, I bought some special hand painted ornaments because I wanted something to have that's mine that I mm -hmm. can like keep. That's not from CVS. Not, yeah. No. No shade for CVS ornaments or Big Lots ornaments. But I said I want something that's like made by an artisan and something that's that, so. A couple of these are some stuff that I bought off of Etsy, and oh, and some that. another things that I bought off of Etsy. Are these little antique-looking ornaments? Point to um, one. 
Like this. Point to one. Yeah. It right this. There. Yeah. Okay. I'm focusing on it now. Ooh, this. this is camera work. Um, you, this is so close up on your face right now. All right. I'm done. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> um, that's it. Anyway, this is my Christmas tree. It's tall and thin, which is good for my room. Like a dick. Like yes. a dick you want to have. Yes. Yes. One like that a hits dick. deep. D um, hits deep. But let's. Okay. We're done with this section. Okay. I hate this. <laughs> I'm putting mine up tonight. I think, uh, I don't know which one I'm going to put up. I don't know if, I'm probably just going to do my Wonder Woman tree this year, I think. Don't you have to do another tree besides a theme tree? I'm, I don't I'm a, know. I'm a big believer that if you have a theme tree, you'd probably need another tree. I like a traditional tree yeah. and then a theme tree. Problem is, I gave away my other tree last year. And I'm redecorating my apartment right now, and I'm like, do I want to spend three hundred dollars on a fake Christmas tree because I like a nice tree, or yeah. do I want to buy two matching lamps to go on the side of my couch? This is a really gay conversation. This is a really gay conversation. Um, That's where we are. I like your vintage ones because I have a blown glass Christmas tree. What are you doing? I'm fixing the viewfinder. Oh. We're all over the place in this episode. <laughs> Christina's gonna be like, "What the fuck?" So, um. But no, I what I what I want to say is there's a I could see it from the window, the new couple who's there. They have a theme tree, but it's all white with white ornaments. And Some people like a monochromatic tree, not my thing. It's not my thing. No, do thing. do your do your theme trees, but to me, my tree is like me, a jumbled up mess of things from different places. Yeah. And it's a mess like me. And it is well, it's prettier than you. It's on a the lot. Inside. You're messier on the inside. That's actually put together kind of well. Yeah, it's a lot. Bits. And I'm I'm pretty proud of my tree. I love it. I'll never have those glitter ornaments again. I'll tell you that. Yeah, there's glitter all um, over your face. And what I could not find though was a decent. I let you take this. A decent tree topper. <sighs> I know. I, I I didn't want to even talk about because you've been complaining about it. It makes me angry. Um. You can't the the tree that I have has a little thing you can plug into it because it there are lights inside. Yo, there's a new thing <sighs> in Christmas tree land, and it's called battery operated tree toppers. So why? That's the so stupidest thing I've ever heard. Does that mean I have to climb up on my tree what if, if it's higher? A, what if you got a twelve foot tree? Take what it, if you have a twelve foot tree? Take the pitch down. <laughs> what if you have there a twelve foot tree? <laughs> I agree. So you means I have to get up there. I'm. I, if I get a battery powered one, I'm just leaving it on like you're a gonna, goddamn nightlight. You're gonna knock it over like Chevy Chase on anyway, Saturday Night Live. Um, and so and they yes, also, that's a dated reference. They also need to be the tree toppers need to. They can't be that heavy because a lot of trees aren't that heavy up there. Because I honestly would love. I've looked, but I get it. It's too heavy. I would love a kind of stained glass looking vintage type of tree topper because i have a lot of uh i have a lot of glass and kind of vintage ornaments mm -hmm. for kind of my my normal tree yeah can't find it you always have to get something plastic but then also i don't like a tree topper that doesn't have a light on it it looks yeah odd. i agree i again i'll repost it in the sissy squad <clears throat> if y'all want but like i look like a fucking twink like when we used to live in our old house, I am so gay. I just made a video about five. Remember, I made a unprompted. Five, I yeah. just was like, I'm gonna make a video to tell people about how to. Decorate I was their I was uncomfortable, tree. but anyway, so I made that. I loved doing that. I had so much fun. But and I stand by what I say. There should be light at the top of the tree because, as I said, it needs to be a star. I like a star or an angel. Not a bow, because three wise men didn't follow a bow. <laughs> didn't follow a bow. I'm not a fan of a bow on top either. Whether you believe or not, it's still the tradition. We got to go along with the story. <laughs> Let's at yeah. least like, go I, with I, this. I, I'm with you there. A bow, yeah. a bow is a no. You know, you. I know that you put the Death Star at the top of your tree, but the three <laughs> wise men don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> Although I kind of enjoy a Death Star at the top. At of least the tree. it's a symbol. A, a symbol. Bow, I don't know what that commerce. <laughs> no, but, uh, yes, if you. Yeah. I worship money. Presents. I don't, I don't like a bow. There's some people that put like the 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 greenery fronds that kind of come out of the tree, like the sh like the tree is about to come and just <laughs> orgasm itself. Just 
I don't like no, that either. It's, it's it needs to be a star or an angel. I agree with you. A, a star or an angel. But here's the, I've been looking for. I wanted to get a male angel. <laughs> so fucking because gay. I wanted to make a gay tree, and I went strangely. Biblically, the angels are mostly male. The that's way here true. Of. Although We'd, the angel apparently over the manger was a woman, I guess. Oh, was it? I, I don't, don't know. know. You know what? I don't the know. angel of the Lord. I think it was probably gender neutral. Thank you. But in in I don't know if the gender association We're, of angels has been a big. But but they normally have names like Michael, Gabriel. So I don't know an angel named Louise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. But I think there it, it does make sense there should be male angels. For some reason, you looking for one is gay. <laughs> no, um, it's very gay. I found an old vintage one. That or was like a, a buff one. It was like, a, a, like an angel. Well, I don't want one like of those fucking one. merman <laughs> angels. No, I want like a pretty, like I did see one and it was, an old, it was real gay. It was an old choir boy and he had his mouth open like he was singing. And I was like, that nope. just looks weird. No, that looks like you're sucking dick. And then I found one. That's at uh, Neiman Marcus. That's How long was this search? About an hour and a half. <laughs> and it was $1,000. What? Because it looks like the fucking Michelangelo of angels. And I'm like, I can't spend that. And also, it was $1,000. And it wasn't even lit up. You got to still have lights on it. Because then, what happens if you don't have light at the top of your tree? There's light all over your tree. And then there's just the world this, ends, apparently. this dark glob on the top of your tree. And it looks like... It looks like God took a shit on the point of your <laughs> Christmas tree at the top, and I don't like it. I have lots of opinions. I know. You really do. Anyway, we've been looking for both. Been lo- and so I told Poodle, I said, you know what? I'm going to make my own tree topper company, and it's going to be called, what is it called? <laughs> I don't remember. Top, was, tops from a bottom. Tree yeah, toppers from tree a bottom. Top, yeah, tops from a bottom. <laughs> tree toppers by a bottom. <laughs> Tops from a bottom. I, I love it. I think and it I'm gonna is make beautiful. Have, you should go on Etsy. Maybe you I've can find looked something. on Etsy. Could not find a male angel on Etsy. Y'all come at her with a male angel. I would love a it. male angel. I would love it. Under forty dollars. And no, I'll spend. I would spend a hundred dollars on a really pretty tree topper. I I did I I believe I don't like. Really, really fancy. I'm not buying Christopher Radko ornaments. I know a lot of people love them. They're, they're, some um, of them are really beautiful. And but he has the, some pretty tree choppers. When I was looking at those vintage ornaments that I found, he has on some Etsy, pretty stars. That I found all of those that someone had found for like fifty bucks. And mm. but they were they were all minis. They're little little tiny ones. You can't um, find stars. It's just a lot of the stars are battery operated right now. Yeah, and I don't know why they're not plugged. So yeah. I also get something. I like this. Get something that's either hand painted or crafted or your local craft fair. What is the one you call it? Affair of the heart. Affair of the heart. I still feels like that oh. sounds like a movie starring Hello, Helena Bonham Carter. You no, you'll see <laughs> when we we just emailed them today to, to do our collab with uh, Jen and Pumps. Of I've I've had it podcast, and we're gonna they're gonna validate my Oklahoma affair stories. of the heart. Yes, it's a real thing. I'm pretty sure Jen hasn't gone. She probably is like, what the fuck are <laughs> Y'all, you know I like me. that. I, I, I'm freaked out by craft fairs. I have to go to one with R.A. with my mother. I li- I do like a little bit of, I'm fine with a theme tree. I actually really am. I think you like uh, one people, uh, one time I went to a friend's house and they did a, it, not Shag, Shag, the artist yeah. Shag. Yeah. They did the shag inspired tree and it was not any traditional Christmas colors and it was really beautiful, Yeah, but it fit in with their home and this is years ago, but I'm all about See, that. I don't think your, <clears throat> your Christmas tree, it's there once a year. It doesn't have to fit in with your home, but I don't think so either. But some people that it's important, they yeah. want it to fit in with the style of that. I just think it's whatever it is. It should mean something to you. Yes. People that get a tree, they're like, oh, this just looked pretty. And I thought these look pretty. Okay, that's great. But I think whether you don't have to believe in Christmas at all. I think, though, this, I think what's nice about the holidays is, is that it is a time for us to reflect kind of what is, what really matters to us mm-hmm. in life, what's important to us in life. And I look at things on my tree 
And it, I'm like you. I collect every time we go on tour places. I make us go somewhere and buy a Christmas ornament somewhere for my. I tree. don't do that. You, you do don't that. like it when I do it, but I'm like Poodle. We got to stop it. And he's like, you got to get that fucking ornament for your tree. I'm because I like to collect when we go to different cities. And I, things I like know that. you have a lot. My mother is in the phase where she wants to give me things. Oh, yeah. Where she's like, you need to have this for your tree. Oh, yeah. So, so she finally realized you're not coming back home to live. <laughs> She gave up on I think, that. I think she made that decision <laughs> she went, this year. She told, she did, looked at, she said, Father Poodle Japer is not coming home. God. I guess he's not going to come back here to live with us, but you and me and Muffin. <laughs> you and me, Muffin. So, God. I guess, you know what you should do? You he's going to come with me when the zombie apocalypse happens. Did you know that you can take a picture of a dog and send it and they'll make a Christmas ornament in the exact likeness of your dog? What if you gave your mother a muffin ornament? I think that is ridiculous. She would love it. She she would love it, but like, you know, perhaps I, there's something about taking a picture. I don't know if I want something so lifelike. It's not about you. It's about her. She would You know love what? It. She would love that. I and need to, your brother would go, damn it. We That's decided We decided this year we're not going to do Christmas uh, presents. Oh, really? The kids are going to get them. We're going to give the kids Christmas presents. Oh. We're all like to the point where like, if I, if I need something, I buy it. Yeah, my mother says that every year, and then she's like, "Well, I just got you something little. I have to get you something for Christmas." Well, my mom will buy me just stand in there. My mom will buy me something like ten dollars or something like that. But we decided, my mom's like, "It's just don't don't worry about it. We don't need anything." And and she's like, "Let's just spend time together." So that's great. Yeah. That's kind of what we're going to do. I want to say one more thing about decorating. Then I'm done. Oh, I could God. do a two-hour episode about this. But I'm going to say, it's fu- you don't, I agree with you. You don't necessarily have to have a color theme for your tree. Sometimes I'll put ornaments on my tree. Like if I look at your tree and just see organically kind of what kind of colors pop out of it. Yep. The tree is very green, but you actually have a lot of red. I have a lot of red tree. ornaments. So... I actually think what you did, which is nice, you like snow. I look at my tree and I go, is there like pops of a contrasting color I could put in that would complement that just kind of varied up? And you didn't mean to do this at all because I know you didn't even think about it, but you have some silver snowflake ornaments and those silver ornaments kind of those balls that you bought are really nice because they break up the green and the red. Those what that was intentional actually. Don't even act <laughs> like it was. You didn't know. It was. You a, a silver ball popped out of your ass and you went, Oh, I guess I'm gonna use this. <laughs> Boop. Boop. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. Another one today. I laid another egg. I'll, if you want more Christmas things, I'll post it on I'll post that video of me as a twink in the sissy squad. Twink, really? I never was a twink. I more know. like a twunk. <laughs> twunk is too muscled. Oh, is that what a twunk is? Yeah. More like a twas. <laughs> <laughs> that means you were once, though. Let's just go twas. We were all were twinks once. And I look in high school, and I was I was. You a were twink a twink. Then. Yeah, yeah, then. Wearing my Cole Hans and my Izod sweater, I was a twink. I think that's just preppy. Well, sometimes twinks can be preppy. We made fun of the preppies at my high school. Oh, not at my high school. Yeah, you, uh, the preps were considered to be stuck up. Ah. Yeah, you didn't want to be the preppy kid. Well, I didn't want to be like the rest of the kids. Um, What was the normal fashion? Like cowboy boots and... No, No, I feel like I... I dressed in more than normal. I was less preppy in actually in high school. I was more preppy in middle school. That was a fashion in middle school. The kids that, but uh, I, it was it was on par with the way people are dressed in high school. Actually, it was all about getting um, Nike Air Maxes and like t shirts. Yeah, more that. That's what I and remember. That's what I dressed more in high school. Yeah. So actually, so I yeah, think- I was more twinky in middle school. Actually, I think I think I did. We had that phase of people. But those were, I think those were the kind of rich kids. And in my thing, no one wanted to be those kids. Mm. Well, we were going alternative. Uh, there were some kids that did that in high yeah. school, but I it wasn't into grunge or any of that. <laughs> so, something just died above us. The neighbor just fell down. The, and and uh, above us, uh, there arose such a clatter. There clatter. <laughs> Poodle popped out a silver ornament <laughs> out his ass and said, What's the What's the matter? Um, 
Okay, before we jump in, I just have one more question. Since we're talking about Christmas stuff. Jesus. Jesus. Um, <clears throat> y'all, by the way, we haven't put the episode out yet. The Single Life Tell All. Holy shit. That's airing that air today on Monday. <sighs> have you watched it yet? Not yet. Oh. You it have is, watched. Yeah. It is it is bonker donkers. <laughs> bonker donkers, y'all. I was Anyway, it is good, y'all. It is good. So that's going to be some. So this episode was quite boring, but at least the single life tell all is coming for us. Good. At one point, Sean Robertson, I think, shit her pants. <laughs> she was so surprised. <laughs> someone sent me a. Someone sent me a, a behind the scenes, and it was like, uh, it was like, hello, from this this emo thing, and it has picture of picture of Caesar going, hey. <laughs> And every time Caesar waves the camera, hey, <laughs> hey. Um, okay, I was going to ask this: What's your favorite Christmas Carol? Or do you want to save that for? Let's save that for our Christmas live show. I think we should set that for the y'all. Christmas be live sure show. December. What? When is that going to be? December twelfth. Twelfth, y'all. That's going to be eleventh. For uh, we'll send that link to. I'm every- going to fuck this up. It's Ugh. December eleventh. I'm sorry. I keep saying twelfth because that's another date. It is the eleventh. Eleventh. Okay, I'll remember that. It's our YouTube 11, live. Eleven. Manifest. It's our YouTube twelve eleven. Well, 12, it's 11. our YouTube live um, for we, for, Plus. Our, for our Patreon members. We're gonna. I think we post the. Um, well, we do it. And we're actually we do it as a post. So actually, re- Patreon and um, and well, no, nobody on Supercast is on the fifteen dollar tier. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is for the Patreon people on the fifteen dollar tier, you'll get to watch it live while it's happening yeah. uh, via YouTube Live, and then uh, it'll be a private it's link. But then we everyone will, on the Patreon will do it as a post for everyone in Supercast. Um, we will, you know what I think. Because you can't do a, uh, we will. Can we? We can't email people. We can do. Super- we can do a. You can do a podcast. You can do the podcast it, and you'll see the post. We'll do a little audio. Yeah, we'll do an audio podcast about it, and we'll put it as a post. And the, and the show notes. The show notes. The links. So yeah. that way, everybody in the Patreon and Supercast c- can watch it. Um, yeah, but we leisure. do our big holiday party. We sing carols. I recite the. Uh, uh, Twas the night. Twas before- the night. Before, before fuckmas before christmas christmas get bring all, your children for this and one. all through the bathhouse yeah all the, yeah. y'all bring your kids my experience on christmas eve in a bathhouse yeah if you are very 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 religious and don't like gay people please watch this yeah I don't and think it's any bring listeners. bring little tiny Tim too. Little yeah, little. That's he's your, not that's so your he's not husband. so tiny in Poodle's version. That's your husband's butt plug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not so tiny either, y'all. I, I exciting December third this Saturday. We're gonna be at the Improv with Kate Casey. Yes, we're She's guests. In the show. So go to our link tree link and you can buy tickets. I for have that. no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> she texted us and I forgot. I about forgot. It. I thought we were gonna try to do a collab with her, but I've got to message her because I don't know if we're gonna have time. I don't think so this week. I don't think it's so already this busy. week. But. We're still going to be there. We're excited to talk to her. <clears throat> anyway, so, um, and, hey, look, it's a bonus. If you're, if, It's actually going to be in, like, in a cute little intimate theater. So if you probably go to this theater, we'll be there. We'll hang out and talk to you afterwards. We'll be there. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get a VIP. <laughs> <laughs> Poodle will be gone. He'll yeah, I, 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 I leave immediately. <laughs> Am I done? <laughs> Are we done? It's great. We, we Kate tells us goodbye. You My leave, Uber's here. You even leave when the show's not over. She's so <laughs> on stage and you just walk out. <laughs> Y'all think it's funny. I got some weight on me. But it's true. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's do this. All right. Uh Y'all, Kim and Usman, this is not this is not fun at all. Like no. her mother, her mother has passed. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't mean to. I was like, "What's going on?" Because the music was like, "One misty morning, it was. I got the news. The ocean meets the sky. I 
that's where we got the blues. And I went, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? And then yeah, her she, mom died. Then her mom died, which we yeah. knew this. So, um, and, yeah. and this happened two to three weeks after she got back. So I'm so grateful, though, she was home for it. Yep. That would have been horrible. And she talks oh. about smelling her gardenia perfume. <laughs> she does, which probably inspired Super Super, super, blood, 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 super blood, Flesh. Yeah. Um, and she says, thank God I have Jamal. Y'all, can you imagine how needy she was with Jamal when I, her mom died? I don't know what it would be like to go through it. Um, I, I'm just grateful I have my brother. It would be hard to be like a soul kind of support. Because yeah. let's be honest, y'all. Jamal already takes care of his mom. Yeah, he's... Yeah, yeah the parentified child for sure. So, but... Um, she does say, I feel like a part of me died with her because she took, she'd been taking care of her mom for eight years now. She lived in her own house, lived yeah. in her mom's house. Jamal says, I don't know what he means by this, but he said, my grandma was not the traditional grandma, but I felt the love. So that maybe there was problems in that. It doesn't matter. We're not here to talk Did, about his relationship with her. What's but. interesting is she said, what do, what do I do now? Who do I, she, her first response, and this just tells you who Kim is, y'all. Who do I take care of now? I I went, oh, honey. It's, you know, I I thought of her and I thought of myself of taking care of my dad's fake cancer. And I'm, I'm a, I'm a people pleaser and a caretaker to my detriment, but it was, but not in this way. But I can't imagine when you, when it, it is, it did help me see even a deeper level of Kim's pattern because in a way, she she wants to do that with Usman. She, yeah. but it's the perfect cliche, but true. She so isn't taking care of herself nope. and her own needs that she's failing of trying to meet other people's needs. And when she does try to take care of her needs, she only need she only knows how to bully people into it or guilt them into it. Like, hold my hand, please, because she probably <laughs> realizes. She feels she goes in a shame spiral yep. probably and feels um, stupid or guilty or bad about herself. So then she lashes out at right. the people around her. And that and so that's a it, you're right. It's a terrible pattern for her. Kim, there you go. I just uh, we just saved you about ten thousand dollars. You can, you can in send therapy. us a check. There you go. That's what you you won't. You won't. Because um, the thing is, honey, it would. She's a hard. I guarantee you, she. She'd be a hard nut to crack in therapy because she had I, she has fought and fought. There's also a little bit of that she thinks she it's a feather in her cap to have done it all herself. You know, and I, yeah, and I think it's one of those things where she doesn't I, like to ask for help. I think when she was younger, she got fucked over a lot by guys. Oh, for sure. And I think. When you're going through that, when you're younger, you're kind of this, you're like, you know what? I'm in it right now. And because sometimes you can't process pain or because you've got to got to get through something. But the problem is that's fine to do that, y'all. Let your anger, whatever, drive you. But it'll know, catch up. If you don't know, there's a point where you have to say, OK, I'm OK now or at least I'm yeah. safe now. Let me kind of emotionally revisit that so I can work that out. Or because that. that'll be part of the pattern that drove you and kept you safe. But now it's not working for you anymore. Yeah. And it's going to cause what we're seeing in her dysfunction. Yeah. <laughs> to put it mildly. To put it mildly. Uh, at the. Uh, but Usman showed up. That's, I was. This was. Boy, I was. Y'all, it, he's a good con. He's so good. And she said, Usman's been making, Jamal even said, Usman's making an effort by keeping my mom happy. And uh, and that's when she says, and this is when I, I knew th- this about her mom. She's like, now it's super important now that I got to go Usman to the States. Because, um, yeah, yeah, I this, the next few episodes, y'all, are going to be intense for her because she's going to be even more needy. Um, and it's going to, this is and now her and Usman, at least in her eyes, I don't know about his, they're trauma bonded because oh. he really showed up and was there for her during the loss of his mom. And uh, as she, you know, she said to 
before she talked to Usman, she was like to Jamal, she said, now you're all I have. And Jamal even said, and Usman was really supportive of you. And he said he was really involved with mom and her passing. And then later when Kim is talking to him, um, she's, she's talking to Usman and she basically, she thanks him and Usman says, well, it's my duty. I love you. And you see, like, you just see a difference of like, and it should make me happy. But when Kim talked no. to him, you could see how much she seemed committed and in love with him. And it made my stomach turn because I went, oh, it's, he's conned you real yep. good now, yep. honey. You know, he can do anything that, he wants. Even And when she told Jamal, you're all I have. And I think in a weird way, she thinks that might make him feel good because that would make her feel good. Y'all, you do no one any favors with saying, you're all I'm living for. Well, especially Zero. your own child. Especially your own child. Because it's, again, y'all, you brought your child into this war world. It's not their job to, ra- to exactly. support a ratio. So I would just say, if you, if you in, in any of way of logic where you think, yeah, you're, you're the thing that makes me get up in the morning to, to, t- to tell your child that, don't do that to your kid. That's not good. There's yeah. so much glitter on your face. <laughs> Sorry, you're a glitter. My it's an eyebrow, ornament. my eyebrow. We're both like can't focus. You're spocking. My spocking. I will say to, I mean, I relate. I'll to never buy more glitter ornaments. <laughs> Yo, I want to. I want to tell a story when we were talking about this. There was the one year Mother Poodle let us, my brother and I, buy icicles for our tree. Oh, have we you used ever to have seen those, those icicles? We used to have those, but ours were. Plastic. They weren't glitter. They were just plastic. No, they're plastic, like plastic little 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 things. Uh huh. And like mylar. They look like little mylar yeah, uh-huh. things. And my mother said, "Absolutely not." Do you know how long I'll be cleaning those up? We asked and asked and asked. She's like, "Fine, but you're both vacuuming every other day." And we did. She's like, "And there were still icicles all around the house. One of the dogs ate some of them. Oh wait, had those, to go those icicles with the strings. Yes. Oh no, my mother went by. I mean, these were like actual plastic. No, that you. Oh no, icicles that are just like really thin filaments. Oh, I would never have those in my house because we mess. we begged my mother one year, and she finally said, "Fine." And then we've asked for that. She's like. And we've asked one year, I think we were in middle school, and we're like, we like, what, what are icicles? And my mother said, are you crazy? <laughs> you lost your mind. I was cleaning those up until the next Christmas. <laughs> one of the dogs had to go to the vet because he had eaten too many of them. <laughs> what dog was that? That scone. was scone. <laughs> well, I don't know what you did. <laughs> no, that was Buddy, Bumper I nickel. think. That was the dog Buddy. What had been the ate- iteration? Buddy? What have been Buddy the- and then Bruno was another Bruno, dog. Bruno, okay. Like and our then, mascot. Yes. Um, but there were so many, and Bessie and Belle were others. And then, They're all bees. And then Muffin, she just said, fuck it, I'm doing something different. She did. She basically says, I'm done with those. <laughs> She's good about breaking a tradition if she wants to. <laughs> yeah. I think she said, I've been hurt by too many dogs with bee names. <laughs> Uh, Muffin's not living forever. Don't mention it though. Well, if you're a robot dog in the zombie apocalypse, well, that's you true. Are. You're gonna live forever. <laughs> we gotta go get some Diet Coke. <laughs> <Got it> master's <laughs> grocery. <laughs> um, Kill the zombie muffin. It is a lot for Jamal in that, like Kim talks about. I know with my own father that prompted me with my own weight loss and health journey and all that kind of stuff because it's an existential thing. So Kim is like, I gotta go to Twitter. Gotta lose the stomach. Gotta keep up. Quit smoking. Quit, quit smoking. I hope she does quit smoking. I have a feeling that's going to be the hardest. Yeah. I, 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 this is one of those things where, y'all, when you're quitting smoking, you got that's something you got to do for you. And I don't know well, if it, it is. It might, though. It might, she might be doing it for her, meaning she sees the writing on her own wall that this yeah. is how I'm going to die. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I just... It feels like another Kimberly 2.0. I hope if she quits smoking, like, just start with that. I feel like she's trying to, she, she's not a, always a lovely person, don't get me wrong. She can be pretty horrible. Kim, what do you mean? But <laughs> she's got enough on her plate, like, quitting smoking, lose weight. Yeah. This is a lot. She's calls, she's, uh, she does call Usman, you guys, and she's like, I'm happy to see you. <laughs> 
It's the He's same. Like, Kimbali. And she she kind of says, it's like crazy. I love me. I, I love you. And you love me. It's like a relationship. She still doesn't believe it. No. It's because well, she's a super fan. She still doesn't believe it, Who became a potential. Because she's a super fan of him <laughs> and a super 90 day. Like a part of her still, still can't believe that she's on 90 day fiance. She can't. She can't believe it. She probably goes to bed and goes, whoa. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to be on TLC tomorrow. Pinch me. Pinch me, Kimberly. Pinch me. Ow. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. It's not that hard. I'm thinking. Whoa. Whoa. So the, then he's like, so I've been thinking. Yes. You know yes. What? what? We didn't talk about this. What? But oh, Jesus. I think it's time for an episode <sighs> of Reality Gaze Theater. Well, that was off as fuck. What? It was you good. Put, no, no, it was no. good. It was, I did like, it was like someone dropped a flute <laughs> and banged it out of shape. There were like fourths and seconds coming yeah, out. I wanted to do something. No, it was not good. <laughs> So we know what to do, not not to do now. Stick with what works. Thirds just, and six. You know what? I wanted to do fourths. I'm the music director of this podcast and will do what I say. I Good like the fourth. Lord. I thought it was pretty. That was horrifying. It is too, you know. No, it was bad. Well, you know. I liked it. Yeah, no more choices. Exoticism or whatever they call it. I was doing that. That's outdated. <laughs> we don't do we don't say exoticism anymore. Whatever. Yeah, what do they say now for music when they talk about that with um, world and influences? All, world influences. I'm glad they don't say that anymore. It's it's basically othering musics of other cultures. Well, yes, yes. Yeah. So that's the term they use, mm-hmm. world influences. Good. Yeah. Or they say this Cuz we learned there are Asian exotic, music. We I learned there are Asian music uh Influences. So they actually credit instead mm-hmm. of this general. They othering, name it. Yeah. They name. They name it. Good for them. Yeah. I was just talking about Madame Butter- Butterfly with someone, and they were asking about that, and I, and I thought, well, that's exotic. And I thought it's actually head. not as it's it's more complicated than that because you could argue that Puccini's scales that he were using were all Asian influenced. That yeah. was at the time of, uh-huh. and it all he he did lean into it in for Tour and Dot and Madame Butterfly. Interesting. But, yeah. Well, that's good. I'm going to stop talking about. This no, I, I enjoyed I that go, because I could go on and on. So anyway, I'm not going to. good. So don't say that. Um, where were we? Uh, Theater. Oh God, I forgot. I forgot what we were doing. So I'll be playing Usman, and you'll be playing. All Super right, Blush and Flash let Queen. me get let me get my let me get my notes. So um. Kim, Kim. Hey, hello. I had an hello, idea boyfriend. the other boyfriend. day. We're boyfriends and now girlfriend. Can I know. Can you believe it? Whoa, whoa. Um, you know my yeah. brother Muhammad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one that liked me. He liked me. Yeah. Yeah, he he's did. a nice guy. <laughs> he's got one. a son. Me. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and you yeah. know, I was thinking. What? What about a son? Does he need a present? Do you need me to give him a present his birthday or something like no that? No PlayStations, me, please. Want, no, I can send you some Super Blossom Body Splat. You can use it on adults. You can use it on children. <laughs> Super Blossom Body Splat. It makes you smell young and youthful no matter what age you are. Do Good not for- ingest Super Blossom Body Splat. <laughs> it will kill you. Good for an airport bathroom. Yes, yes. Great, um, great. But I sent something to Darcy, but she didn't call I'm going to adopt my brother's son. Whoa! <laughs> didn't I'm, expect. Didn't expect that. What did you? <laughs> I was not prepared for that. <laughs> Whoa! Because let's be honest. What? His children are all my children. What? And I haven't thrown enough at you yet. Wait a minute. <laughs> you just want to. You just want to take your brother's son. Yeah, it's my, totally cool in my culture. And bring him over here? He'd be over here and you want with me to, us. You want me to raise a baby? Raise Maybe? I'm not when? sure. I'm going to throw when? this out here to confuse you. What? You want me what? And to make you spiral more because what? that's what I do. Because when Whoa. you're in a chaotic state Whoa. is when you're the most susceptible. Usman, <laughs> I just quit smoking today, Usman. <laughs> I don't think What I'm saying Usman. is don't quit your Mimi's job Usman. just yet. I need to calm down. I need to calm down. Show me your yammy. <laughs> and scene. I think 
did not see this. I did not. See I did this. not either. I think at this point, I was going to ask you why he. Why is he doing this? Well, I have a theory. Um, Nigerian sissies come at us. By the way, I, is this normal for that? You just so you say, "Hey, sis, you've got five. No, I got none. Well, let me just take one of your daughters. It, I don't know if it. I think it's more of an issue of opportunity. So sometimes maybe maybe they do legally adopt. That's different. I That's know, but different. It, it did. We had feel... Tarzel wanted to bring over her children, right? And uh, and then we also had um, what's their name? I think they've been fighting, but the UK sister Christine and Sean. Christine and Sean wanted to bring over her kids. This is different, though. This is him adopting his brother. No, it's child. different. Yeah, we've never had someone saying, "Hey, I'm gonna bring my cousin Leroy because I think he'll do better in California." Than Nigeria. Well, what's interesting is it was interesting the way he talked about it. He's like, I chose, I can't remember the kid's name. He's like, we're the same. Uh, we're the, we Ma- see each other. M A D H I Madi. 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 Um, we we he sees. He's me. like, I'm very connected to this kid. <laughs> I love him. We ha- we share blood. So I assume, as my dad Ma- said, Matthew. Got to be blood. <laughs> when you had a baby, when he told me he wanted me to have a, he w- wanted me to have a baby. I've talked about that. Maybe yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still disturbs me. Yeah, though, when when he I said, said that, Dad. He's like, Matthew's time for a little Matthew, and I said, Well, Dad, I can adopt a baby. He's like, No, 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 son. It's got to be blood. <laughs> got to be blood. I, I, I can pretty much assure you. I think my mother would be. Happy any time a child was mine. Maybe maybe she wouldn't. I just uh, I think at this point, if you said, "Mom, I'm gonna have a kid," she'd go, "Good japer, why you want to do that?" <laughs> probably that's yeah. probably what she would do. <laughs> you know, your life will be over. <laughs> mine was. <laughs> why Why would you do this to me now when I'm old? I can't. I can't run around with a grandbaby. <laughs> you should have seen my body before yeah. I had children. God, you would have got me when I was look, six. Look at me in this bikini. <laughs> My mother still has a, a pretty picture readily available. My to, mother has never shown me a picture of her in a bikini. Oh, my mother. I don't want to see my that. My mother had a tiny bathing suit she wore. My mother was a slut. <laughs> I am sure of it. Where you get it from? Maybe. That's where we get it from, and the cats in the cradle and the silver no, spoon. No, it's too sad. It's too Little sad. boy blue and the man in the moon. So, but, so this is where I'm stumped on this. I why, How does why? this help Usman? It's uh, because for the, th- that's what's confusing. Because I think what he's thinking is he'll have a child and the mom will look at that child as blood. So he'll say, well, Usman has a child to raise now. Now I can die. And then, and I, I guess that was what I was thinking because then that will solve the problem. Because I'll be honest, I don't think Usman wants his own. I don't think Absolutely Usman wants not. His. You're just coming no, to this? No, we've never, we've actually never said that on the show. No, he'd never. He doesn't want to have like, kids. I've always known that. I never think he wants to have kids. He we, but we want never actually kids? said it, I don't think. No. He's only doing this for his mom. Yes. He wants to get married. He wants to go to America. And he wants to be a U.S. and Nigerian citizen yeah. and travel back and forth and be an international superstar. Yeah. He does not want children. And he wants to or barely. Or if he does, he's got 20 years to think about children. And not barely now. acknowledge them. Exactly. And, bar- and this, I think he says, wait a minute. This will keep my mom happy. And this it's a kid Kimberly that I already happy. And it's a kid that I already like. It's not a baby. Yeah. He can travel and feed himself and wipe his own ass. Yeah. And it makes my uh, potential wife happy because he then doesn't... I don't have to have a first wife that I have to fuck and impregnate. Right. And I think he's misunderst he's he's miscalculating how much Kim Bali actually wants a child. Because she said, well, she has a child, so she definitely knows how to raise a child. Honestly, I agree. God, are you a camel? You went through that real quick. You, you, have, you have barely the same amount of the water that I have. Oh, maybe you're right. I don't give a shit. It, Who yeah. cares? <laughs> um, I honestly think, Kimberly, this is your best offer. I agree. It this is the best offer. This is the best, the best bo- of both worlds for you. It's sad that that's where we are now. We're in bargaining. We are in that stage of grief. Because, Kimberly, <laughs> this is what's going to happen. 
You're going to adopt the kid. All right, he's going to adopt the kid. The kid will come over. You'll fall in love, possibly even like the kid. Then the mom's going to die. The kid's going to go off and do whatever they want to do or even go back to Nigeria. And you're and Usman's never going to see this kid again. Yeah. And yeah. Kimberly either, depending on what type of person she is, will never see that kid again or will get very attached to that kid because her relationship with Usman is shit I and then put all that. of herself into I that kid. I think it's that. I'm worried I it's think that. it's that. And that's even more tragic. Ugh. And and th- again, <clears throat> and also it feels familiar to her because raising another black child. Yeah, because that's what she raised feels fr- I'm telling you, I could so see that happening. I can just, it's that's the future. Which is sad, but I think it's her best offer. Um, I think it's I think it's the it is the least emotionally treacherous path for her than having a first wife. Y'all, there's no way she could handle no, that. No, no, no. Y'all, don't worry though. This is all going to implode within a season or two. <laughs> it's probably never going to get there. No, uh, y'all. Later Although on, maybe he is. She's taking him to an African restaurant. Having Nigerian like, biscuits. Has some, has some This look good. I, um, we don't have. I know there's Ethiopian food by Fairfax. We don't have but a I've lot never of African it. food in yeah. general. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're calling African food kind of Pan-African, where it's like from different but parts this looks of Africa. Spe- specifically, they were talking about Nigerian. We have Ethiopian um, down uh, here. We also, there is also a Nigerian restaurant on, in, in Little Loop, Ethiopia. Oh, there but is. I've seen it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But, um. But Ethiopian, we have a huge Ethiopian community here. I do love I samosas. I love Ethiopian food. I do love samosas. Um, so it's right by Hanson's Bakery, though. So, I, so y'all can you get those cupcakes. J- they're basically, and Jamal says, as a millennial, this is fire. This shit is fire. <sighs> I I I know what, I know I know. People as a say therapist that. would say, what's behind the tears? I want to say, poodle, what's behind that sigh? This is fire. It's emoji culture, because that would be fire. And behind that is this is the loss of language. Words, and being able to express yourself. That's where I am. I I agree with you. I think that's fine, but I'm just saying it's... Uh, we're gonna. There's going to be a day, y'all, where people write term papers with emojis. (laughs) You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I did respect Andy Cohen just a little bit not more. Not complete emojis. When he completely <laughs> read that, read uh, Tasha's, uh, Tasha's emoji letter. Just like, emoji question mark? Andy Cohen, ex- disgusted face. Yeah, he, he should have. I'm telling you, if you've never watched when he, when she was on Watch What Happens Live, it he tried to come for her and she just shut down. So I know why she didn't go to Watch What Happens to, to the reunion. Uh, so, Kimberly, so they're eating food, and Kimberly's like, well, so he talked to me about he wants to adopt his brother's son. And Jamal said, so what? you would raise a child. And Kimberly's like, yeah, yeah, this is normal. This is normal. This is normal, <laughs> Jamal. That's the thing. She becomes the convincer in chief. Yeah, and Jamal just is sitting there going, uh, his yeah. pretty little eyes look so shocked. He looks so good. I, uh, did, you, did you know when he said, well... I'm having problems. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna have to trust your instincts, but this is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot. And he also says, so when you're 70, that kid will be 18. He's like, yeah, that's right. Yep, yep, that's right. Yep, yep, that's right. Yep. So and Jamal's like, okay. So he was having a second wife. You were gonna be the second wife. You were gonna have the baby. But now you're going to adopt. And so that's when he said, this is a lot. Cause it was Because to hear him lay, he laid out for like three minutes all and the hoops. None of it penetrated. Through. That's that's what I'm saying with her in therapy. I think oh, she would yeah. be the hardest nut to crack. Oh, I think I, so. I, I think. And he said in his in ITM in the moment, he said, you know, this is not a fucking dog. This is a baby. <laughs> a child. Yeah, it's a child. It's hot when he cusses. Yeah, we need to move on. Y'all, before we do that, we're going to take a little break. We'll Uh, see you on the other side of that. Ooh, I'll be a dog, Jamal. Okay, stop it. Stop it. Look at her on your couch. 
Where? There's glitter all over your couch. Kind of actually where the semen what? used to be. Why? Now there's Why? glitter. Why? Why? Y'all, we were interrupted at a commercial <laughs> break by what, Poodle? <laughs> a phone call from Mother Poodle. Mother Poodle is called. Well, and, and when I said, yeah, Mom. And I, and I, I, this is where I made the mistake. I don't, you, you probably heard it. And I said, immediately I said it and I regretted it because what'd you say? I said, Hey mom, uh, what's up? We're recording a podcast. What do you need? Her tone uh-huh. complete. Well, when I, say, I was just, I'm just sitting here. Uh, your dad's already gone to bed and, uh, just a little bit lonely. Maybe she said, she said that. <laughs> A little bit long. It's fine. I'll talk to you tomorrow. No, and I said I can call you back. Oh no, no, no. I'm going to bed. It's fine. Y'all get. You said hi, Vicky. Sorry, hi, Mother Poodle. Uh huh. And uh, and and she went hi, Matt. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. I love you. When I can't believe I said, what do you need? I thought it was something that she. She was needing because I, you know, that's validation a little bit from the few times I'll be doing something. I'll say because when I get busy with something and if you call me and I'm in the middle of something, if I answer, I'm like, hey, what's up? It makes you you don't even say hello. No, I'll say hello. I'll just be like, hey, what's up? And if I say that, you're like, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for inconveniencing you. (laughs) So I'm sorry that happened to you, but I, you come by it honestly, we see. You shouldn't have said that, though. You should have known better. I should have. As soon as it left my mouth, y'all, don't say what do you need to your parents. I said it without not even thinking, and I'm going to pay for that tomorrow. I can already see. She'll have saved up about four stories to tell me. My Yikes. Wife's just send her flowers tomorrow. Fuck, though. I'm coming home. For how many days are you going home again? Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be... <laughs> but hopefully I can get it to where she's kind of annoyed me being huh? in her house. That and is it's... never going to happen. No, no. I, I, I'll get in her space and she'll get annoyed with me. But she loves you so yeah. much. But y'all, uh, we've talked about where she, a lot of you came at me and said, my mother makes, or I, my people freeze our onions and stuff like that for the trash. And th- she does do that, but I can't put anything in the trash that smells at all. It's not, they're like, te- you know, text in the summer. I'm like, it's not that. She's just that neurotic. Boy, you got a lot of messages about tra- things people put in their trash. Oh yeah, people people are smell freaks who listen to us. I did I did well, I was reminded with my mom over Thanksgiving that my mother is O C D about the dishwasher. I was loading the I, I do it. You, that's I do it she, too. That's what she yelled at me about when I was a kid is I would load the dishwasher wrong. Was it I pre rinse though? Does she do that? I mean, you take the food off of it, but you don't have to. She is a, a, a super nice dishwasher, oh. so it'll clean. Actually, I pre clean. I pre rinse them. I I'm just like, but no, it's how you load it in the. I would load the dishwasher, and my mom just literally at one point I was going down to hold a knife, and she just took it from my hand and just started moving <laughs> stuff around and doing it the way she I, likes. Well, what? No, you put this the silver cup facing up, obviously. Yes, but. She's got her way to do it. And I do plates over here and bowls and then mugs and cups. But in the little top. thing, she likes all the spoons to be together, all the forks to be together. I was just That's them in a there. little much. She's oh, got her way. So it's easier to put them away? It makes sense, but that's her way. I wasn't offended because I don't live there. But I, it just it actually made me laugh because it reminded me of when we used to fight as a, when I was a teenager. And I'd go, fine, mother. My mom hated it if I called her mother. That's what I would say when I was mad. We need to move and on. Once I said, fine, mother. And she's like, don't you call me mother. It makes you sound like a sassy little girl. <laughs> and and little that's bit, what I am. And that's what I am, mother. That's what I am. Wow. I was about to say, you sound like a sassy little girl when you say yeah, that, too. she hated when I said it. Joby and Yara, speaking of sassy little girls. I forgot about them. <laughs> Y'all, uh, crank up the beer organ. Um, 
Karina, we're seeing her friend Karina, um, and she's like, Jovi, take Myla. I'm going to see Karina. And there she is, and I'm like, and, she, and Jara, Yara said basically, it's just such a relief to see her, see her alive. And we find out that a rocket, right after she left, a rocket went into Karina's building. <laughs> I'm glad she got out. We're fine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My mom doesn't like the way I do the dishwasher. Your mother's lonely. We'll be okay. I liked it too when Karina said, I can't believe you have a child because when I met, we were like talking about what guys we wanted to fuck. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go good. So they're crying. They see one another. Um, and then even I love it that Yara says, Yara's like, she's like, I see Karina. I don't need to worry about stuff. She's like, but I'm still complaining a lot. Well, she said, I, when she actually said, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm. I'm. I can't read what I'm saying. I'm not ready. I don't know. Uh, she said I don't need to worry about stuff, and then she kind of said, "Like a fucking stand." It's like I still complain. <laughs> she even turned her head and said it in a side, like I still complain a lot. Yucky, yucky. And I guffawed, laughed. She's funny. Um, and she jo- feels guilty. And, and Joey's like, "Yeah, that. Korea. Uh, I like I like uh, uh, Karina because like she's big." Uh, English, so he's just like that's the kind of girl I, I like. He doesn't talk, doesn't talk a different language in front of me. By the way, the town, where are they again in Germany? Uh, Garmisch. Oh, it looks beautiful. A yeah. uh, lot of ski towns in that area of Germany, mm. but Garmisch is one of the most famous ones. Yeah. So they go to breakfast. Um, Milo looks real cute at the little table. Um, little <laughs> yeah. The, so the waitress comes up, and that's where Joby's like, uh, "Let's have two beers." And the, and the, the waitress even says yeah, for breakfast. Ahead. Yeah, she says beers for breakfast. Jovi, Frischtick. Jovi, why you want to get beers at breakfast? Well, I'm on vacation, y'all. This is the best beer. I can't get this kind of beer in the U.S. Okay, Yara? Jovi can't stop being Jovi. He's just Jovi and Yara. Um, I like Karina said. I didn't really think they were a good match because both of them are very stubborn. That is extremely astute. Yes. And both of them are very stubborn. And Yara's mom's wearing a y'all t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> a sweatshirt that says y'all. A y'all. You know Loved that Joby it. got her that. Oh, yeah. She's just loving it. She's, She's loving just it. She's sitting there like this with a shirt that says y'all. y'all. Jordan's <laughs> like, I got, uh, 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 mom... I got you a shirt. You're going to love it. That's Actually, like we say y'all all the time. That uh, We do all the time. That could be on our merch. Just y'all. Y'all. That could be on our merch. We need to, we need to yeah. not say it maybe it's as much. <laughs> That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Y'all. 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 I think that was one of our reviews one time. They uh, say y'all like so many times. Like y'all. 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 Yeah. That person can sit on it. <laughs> That's what I think. Um, but like. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify please. Podcasts, wherever you listen please, to it. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Hold my hand, please, please. Uh, <laughs> so I can now. I have to say the word please. I constantly go please, please. <laughs> okay. In a baritone, booming Kim's baritone. So they uh, speak English, please. Yeah, they're talking. I get, I get very upset, like a toddler, when people speak other languages in front of me. And Yara's like, Jovi, I'm saying that you need to work, but I would love to stay here. And that's where we get into this, where Jovi, Jovi tries to say, basically, we don't need to go word for beat by beat. I think the important thing to know, I gleaned from this, um, <clears throat> gleaned, gleaned. From, gleaned from this, is... Jovi's saying that I don't want you to stay here because I'm worried about the war moving. You're in Europe. Da, da, da. I think that's about 10% true. Yeah. I think 90% is true that he, and Yara calls it out on this episode. She says, he knows I have all this support here. And yeah. if I stay here, I don't need him. I think it's more like 70, 30. You said okay. 10%. I do think I, it's that little. I think, well, I think he doesn't know what it could be. That's fair. Um, Because he knows very little, even though he's traveled around the world, he knows very little about geopolitics. True. So he just assumed there's a war in Ukraine, so it's going to spread to Europe. That's how wars work, Yara. It's like the flu. Yeah. And, uh, but I think, I think you're right. 
What I what I don't <sighs> can Grinder just hush while we're doing our podcast, please. <laughs> Boy, um, I can't help if the milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Uh, so he basically says, um, uh, she says he's like, I don't get comfortable. He, he I'm, I don't feel comfortable with you staying here. It's like we come as a family and we're gonna leave as a family. And like his friend Tyler just goes, yeah, yeah, uh, with his fucking date rape face he's got on him. Um, and but then then Yar and Joe they. Turner Yar says, "Oh, so if the war comes here, Thomas, you can protect us, right?" She yeah. basically <laughs> she starts telling basically, and Joby doesn't get it, but she's basically saying how ridiculous and ill-informed his argument is. Yeah, I I totally agree, and I think uh, what 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 only thing that gave him more evidence or mere evidence. Uh, more ammunition was her mom starting to cry. And he's like, don't cry. I think that's more evidence for him saying your mom wants you to stay here. Because he's only saying it as your friends and family are against me. It's very convenient it's very, for him to use that because yeah. he needs to see the world as an adver- adversary kind of place Also, for him. Jovi, I think, we, I think we said this before about him, but if not... It, can bear repeating he's very sensitive oh yeah he won't admit it but he's very so he takes anything that's even everything personally personally. and that if you think about it that's where a lot of their fights happen is he takes everything so personally yara is from yara's ukrainian she does not take things personally situationally yes situationally so and that is where he feels dropped by her a lot what i what i what I what I took from this is he doesn't trust her. He doesn't to and and I don't and and this is I've said there's this is fraudacity, y'all. I think they have I think they have amped up the drama here. Yeah, Mama's saying, please, Jovi, please yeah. let her come over here. Um, but I do think the fact that that what's real is the lack of trust that he has in Yara because there is a part of him that thinks she will just stay in Europe and he won't get to see his child again. Yeah. Even though she can't, I think it is just irrational for him. And because he, I think he thinks, I think he sees anyone who's not an American as someone who looks down on Americans. He even talked that way. I'm American. Mm-hmm. Or the way a lot of Americans think, mm-hmm. because we 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 down other countries because we don't like them looking down on us. Yeah, it's that kind. Yeah, of, it's like let he, us let's shoot you in the foot first. He feels that way, and um, I I think if he let her stay in the Ukraine while if a month happened, which. I don't know if he's still going to do that. If he would, if he would do that, it would show such an outpouring of trust for her. The other thing is, I don't think she really trusts him, and I think they're a real, they have a real problem here. You, you, um, yeah, and you know what? I know there's money, so there's that. But if you're really worried about it, like let her go, let her have time with her mom. Yeah, and then maybe I think this could be a beautiful gesture. Maybe then Joby. When he finishes work, could meet her, and what even if like Mama Gwen came over to meet her mom, like yeah. to meeting of the families. I, and- I I totally agree. I don't think that either of these people are going to bend enough for that. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, I I'm more concerned about the fact that neither of these people seem to trust one another enough to have thousands of miles between them. She trusts when he goes to work, when he's with other, um, but she, in her head, the idea of trusting enough for him not to leave her when she has a child for someone who's hotter. Well, I think that's what I was going to say. I think this, why this is emotional for Jovi, I think it's his own feelings of being not enough and feeling yeah. like, and, and feeling like basically that. Uh, that she that she is that, that he married out of his league, he did, and probably a lot of him thinks in the back of his head, which is probably true, that had they not had a baby, Yara would have left him already. 
I kind of what understand I that happens. What we see in the next week on when he says to her, "Let's have another baby." That's he wants to lock her down. It's just such a it's such a cliche, but this idea of having a baby. He says, we'll strengthen our family. I went, no, it won't. They ha- I was supposed to save their marriage. No, it's a, you want her back barefoot and pregnant in yep. the U.S. so that way you can control the situation. Right. And with two children, you can't. it's, it's harder for you to leave. It's harder for her to leave. Yeah. Because yeah. Yara, how is she going to travel with two young children by herself to her country? Yeah. Please, I hope Yara doesn't do it. I don't think she will. What a fucker to even dare we've, to we've, ask that. We've, 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 um, uh, I think that is, I think that even feels out of, slightly out of Joby's reach. It feels a little bit gilding the lily to Just, me. That's what, this, they're the one storyline where even if Michael and Angela are fraudacity, <sighs> it makes sense. It tracks. It's on brand. Yeah. But this is like, where are we going with this? I, I don't know. It feels like we took a mm. different turn. And like, if you really want, I know you want to obviously go back to, but her mom could get an asylum visa. Yeah, but I, she doesn't want to leave. I'm not saying that it's easy to pick up and leave your life. Mm-hmm. But if you want to have more children and you want time with your mom, like maybe she could get a visa and come over. I don't know, though. Then she would have to be here for 10 years. That's, I, don't, that's, I don't know the particulars that's of an it, asylum but visa. That... <sighs> I think we have we are trying to create more drama with them this season than their things feel flimsy. Yeah. And that's what things are starting to feel flimsy with me for this for them this season. <sighs> Let's talk about where we've been flimsy Michael. for several seasons. Michael. Because now it seems like everything's okay. Um and in a way, now but Michael give it time is angry. because Jake it's the last week of November. Don't forget, we're going to be doing this until January. I don't know. I actually get a sick feeling in my stomach when I think about that. You know what probably is going to happen? At least maybe it'll be three tell-alls. Like single I think life. it will be. Single life is three tell-alls. I think it'll be three tell-alls. And you know what? I was like, there is no way single life could be three tell-alls. And then after seeing the first episode. But it's only 42 minutes. It's only 42 minutes. And with everything that happened, I want to see two more. (laughs) So y'all, we are swimming in my, we're getting Michael's brand new swimming lessons. Every time he swims, it's like that. Was it the Martin Short, Harry Shearer, uh, SNL, synchronized swimming skit where he's like dying? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way Michael swims, he hasn't had a lot of lessons. It's kind of adorable because he's seeing an adult looking like a (laughs) five-year-old. He's still afraid he's going to die. Yeah, that was my dad when he was learning. He learned to swim? When he was like 40, my age, like 43 years. And it looked like he was about to die? Oh, he put on, we used these, but he would put on little floaties on his arm. (laughs) I and I get and I'm sure it is a fear. Um, oh yeah, he could touch in the pool. Still wore floaties, like he was so scared. That is that interesting? Because for me, I think I just grew up swimming, and I, I never had a fear of the water. That's why we did. Because my dad, my son, ain't ever gonna be afraid of the water. But yeah. I didn't have a dad to take me swimming like you do. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Dad. So y'all, they are, and at one point she says, hold mommy, and then I threw up in the trash can. Um, He's holding her. She's vibrating her, when we, vibrating her coochie. It, I remember doing that. (laughs) I do remember your coochie. My coochie. Michael, if you lean up on the pool like this, it vibrates. We used to do this as a girl, vibrate her coochie. Wow, I do remember if you the way it would kind of vibrate. It would, it would, it would tickle cool in the gang. Yikes! Don't ever talk about that for me ever again. <laughs> but, but she does say, "I feel sexy. I feel hot. I feel sexy. I feel sexy." Don't ever do that I again either. I can't sing anymore like that. I'll just start. Talking. Um, and he does. He gives her some champagne and roses and a bracelet. I don't know when this was filmed, but he must have had to go really quickly because it seems like this was all filmed sequentially. But yeah, maybe not. Have, maybe not. He's uh, like, I want to make it romantic with her, 
before I talk about Billy in Canada. <laughs> it's in, in a way he is extremely. Uh, 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 I I think it's one of the reasons they have made it this long. Is he is very calculated in the way he needs to bring things up with her. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's the only way to deal with someone like Angela. It is. Um, so y'all, they are they are going to talk. She says, um, uh, "This is uh, I needed to believe." What is it? This she's like. This is what I needed to believe that, that I haven't had for so long. And he says, kind of buttering her up. She's like, "So look, I don't want you to go to Canada." And y'all, the thing about this is... He actually said first, just because it is very important how he says things. He said, it would make me happy if you did not go to Canada. Right. So he actually, smartly, didn't talk about what she Preventing. He said she, about his. Not what she does at all. She still heard, I don't want you to go to Canada, though. Which he doesn't. But my, Angela would say, Michael... You're not going to You're Canada. You're not going to Canada. Yeah, that's exactly what she would do. He did not do that. Um, and uh, and then she's like, but Michael, I want to help him. He's fighting for his life. She wants to cook for him and help him. And she says he's a really good person. He doesn't even know I have a crush on him. Right. And, and so, she decides, well, let's call Billy now. So they call him. He, uh, I guess he's in his car he looks maybe it's his uh his kidney issues and kidney failure. He looks older than the last time we saw him. He does. Maybe it's the lighting. He's not well. Maybe time moved. I and uh and he's like, "Hey Angel." And do do I believe that they struck up a friendship? I I here's this. What what I believe She was a hospice nurse. Yeah, so we're what I that. believe is Angela has a heart for lost causes. If something is so desperate, it it has to ha- it when it has those high stakes against it, she actually does want to help. I bet Angela is someone that takes in hurt dogs. Yeah, yeah. I and, mean, literally, like hurt dogs. I could see her doing that. And the thing about uh, are we recording? We are. Okay, oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. The light was gleaming. The, I think there's glitter and on the camera you, you know now. Why? I couldn't see the red light. When the stakes are so high against someone, she thinks, what else do I have? Mm-hmm. I, I know they're probably going to go sometime, but I can help them. That's why she chose hospice. Mm-hmm. But if it's something where she has to make a decision, that would be the worst thing. And she says she loves doing that. Like she told me in that in- when she sent me that Instagram message yeah. in the voicemail, she said, I'll wipe your dad's ass. I love doing it. Yeah. It's something about when... When the when it gets so bad, it couldn't get worse. Yeah. So, I know what I'm getting. I I you know I want to add to that. I think too. That's when Angela in her life didn't have someone to depend on. Yep. When things couldn't get worse, she felt alone and had to do yep. it herself. Right. And so she wants to be that person for them. No, that makes sense. And and then so he said um, he says I'd love to meet Michael, and Michael says. Do you know my wife has a crush on? She's like, oh, Michael, well, I can't believe but what she you enjoys say that. it. She does. Yeah. She enjoys it a little bit. I think she is slightly embarrassed when he asks her. He asks him because then it makes her feel like she would presume. And uh, and I would expect him to say, Michael, I'm gay. <laughs> That's what I thought he was going to say, Michael. I don't have a crush on Angela. Because I'm gay. I'm gay. And he said, I adore your wife, but I don't have a crush on her. And he's like, why do you call her angel? And I think this is now, this is Afri- African culture. This is But the no same that Angela didn't understand. I agree. It's, it's turnabout. It's fair play. Because like, why is, she my, why is she my person? Why? She, and Angela didn't even try to understand any of that. So I'm kind of like... Why should Michael understand? I this? agree. Why? But I'm saying. Uh, but you're right. He calls her an angel because he explains because she's been such a a guiding force and helpful in my life and right. helping me raise money. Yeah. And he says I do a, I do dialysis. Um. Uh. And and Billy says she's always presented herself respectfully, and he's like I wouldn't have any time to do to because I do dialysis five days a week, seven hours a day. You know. 
And he's like, angels probably become a place of kindness. And, uh, and, and she looks at my, you brought me misery and he brought me smiles. And, and she's like, if you got, st- you can't stop me. Uh, uh, if you want to, if you want to leave me, go ahead, but I'm going to help. This is just another part of her work, her life. Like, this is what she needs to do. And it's, it's weird how, um, I, I think it would be too much for Michael to let his wife do that. Um, and it's, it's, it's like hard for me. Like, you do you see, think he should have a problem with it or do you think he should let her go? I think, I don't know what he should do. Um, I think if Angela really leveled with Michael and said, or maybe he wouldn't see it leveled with him and said, I need to do this cause I take care of people. He's my friend. He's going to die soon. I'm going to be with him to the end. But I think because of her, of her being she so... She might say that off camera. I don't think she wants to say that on camera. No, it's... Yeah. But I think she's... I think I think he would let her. Um, I think she's going to. I think... I honestly think in this situation, what we're seeing in the edit... Yeah. What we're seeing just on our television, I agree with Michael. She should not go. I don't think she should go. Mm-hmm. Because would she let him? And it's not a tip for tap, but it is when what happens, y'all, when you set a boundary that's an unrealistic boundary and expectation, you start to create precedence in your relationship. I agree with that. Yeah. And Angela has created this precedent. So Michael's saying, but if I let her do this, I can never do anything. And also basically I'm like he said this entire season, I'm giving her all the control. And yeah. She's punishing him. She's taking away from yeah. him to make money. I, I agree. I guess for me, I can't see it as it is tit for tat. Um, and for me in a relationship, it shouldn't be tit for tat. hundred percent. I think I, she should be able to go personally. I, I know. I, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you're saying in their relationship, I, I, it's so weird because if he doesn't let her go, it's going to seem cruel on his point. Oh, she'll even punish though, him forever. Yeah, even though it's actually, it's only what she did to him, even worse. Yes, and or still, even even less than that. Less, sure, even less than what he did. And honestly, did him. it's really shitty of Angela to put him in this position. I agree, um, but. It is, I think this was obviously, she's made it up. I think this this, this goes, this is a t- double-edged sword. What this does is it gets, it sticks it to Michael, but it also helps her Florence Nightingale complex. I also think it, 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 it what Angela probably wanted, it puts Billy on the show and helps raise awareness. Yeah. So she's thinking hopefully she can talk on her Instagram and raise money for him. Right. Because they, if you look at her Instagram, y'all, they do do TikToks. Because that's the weird thing with Angela. I know a lot of people have problems. We have a lot of problems. We have a lot of problems with her. And I don't want to say she has a good heart because I think a lot of times, honestly, she doesn't. She has a lot of, lot of, lot of fucked upness in that heart. But there's this like part of her, maybe it's like the Grinch heart that, but it hasn't grown yet. But there's this part of her though that really wants to, you know what it is? I think, honestly, like you've talked a lot, Angela is just. It's like a bacon wrap date. I'm hungry. I'm I don't know where you're going with this. And the date is the goodness. But Angela is just wrapped. But the bacon's good too. This might not be a great analogy. It's not. But the bacon is the hurt. Angela is that date. Bacon never hurts. <laughs> well, it's not good for you. That's true. Got you on that one. Yeah, but there's some things that are good about it. So Angela is wrapped. Maybe it's a poop colored date. Uh, roll covered with date. Me. It's it, it, sure. <laughs> she is covered in this bacon poop, whatever. You know, no, just if poop. If you're vegan, you don't, don't like bacon. Don't soil bacon. She is covered in this. She's and she's so covered in her hurt that underneath, I do think she wants to. 
I do think Angela just wants to be loved and put love into the world. Yeah. I'm not saying that she doesn't, for she her. doesn't know how to do it. Don't come at, but I think that is who Angela is at the core. Of, I don't know if I would say the same for someone like Kimberly or Usman. Yep. I don't think I would say the same even for Bilal. someone like Bilal. Well, Bilal for sure. I wouldn't say that about Andre. Nope. Uh, I wouldn't say that about a lot of people that we see on this show. Yep. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, <clears throat> part of us, probably up until this season, did – there was – I don't know, last season Or too. last season too. <laughs> did you rooted for Angela because we saw so, – we, we get glimpses of that goodness. But now it's just at this point, it's just even we're off the bus yep. on this one. She's dug herself something too deep. She's – I think she's become – Closer to the persona she is on the show. She's going towards that persona. She's found the, a persona. That Jerry Springer persona. Yep. Y'all guess Which guess she was what? on. Guess what's going to happen on the tell-all. She's going to get angry and walk off. Yep. Yep. And then probably yell at... It would be interesting to see her yell at Bilal. I wouldn't get mad about that. <laughs> I, we'll talk about it. We've got a long road for that. But it will be interesting to see... Who comes for Bilal? Yeah. Because we've now seen all of his season. Um, I wish... And they watch... Y'all, they watch every not, single episode. I only wish... This is when I wish Tiffany and or Veronica were on this season. They would get they to would, Bilal. They would fucking come for him. Yeah. Even though Tiffany has no room to talk. I don't think Libby will. I don't think she Libby won't. will come for him. She won't. They they might. The both of them might sit over there and come Yara make fun might. Of him. Oh, that's right. Yara might. Jenny. Kimberly. Jenny, Jenny doesn't even know what she's happening. Kimberly. Kimberly she, she might. probably will come for him. Because y'all, she's a super fan. Remember, she shows up in the tell-all. Anyway, but you know what? I shouldn't talk about the tell all now because it's going to get you excited and start thinking that the end, but the end is not nigh. The Let's end, end is the far, show. far, far away, y'all. I hate you. That's the show. See us December 3rd in Los Angeles at the Improv this with the Casey. a long episode. Yes, well. You talked about Christmas trees too much. You got me on a soapbox. All right, everybody. Go to realitygays.com. It's not porn anymore. Shout out to the Sissy Squad. 10,000. 10,000. Yay, that's 10, wonderful. 10,007 now. 10,000. So today. Seven. Um, seven. 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 I knew you were going to do that. We call these people lonely hearts because aren't we all just lonely hearts looking for love in all the wrong places, poodle? Yes. And if you can't wait to adopt your brother's son. Or, or you know what? If you have glitter all over your <laughs> face and you look like you just got fucked by Santa's lead elf. <laughs> How do I get glitter on my face? Call us. Call us. <laughs>